Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Happy Halloween. I am Spider-Man today, rocking the black and red One Fit and Company hat and this tight shirt that I wore for my leg workout. Killed it, did hamstrings and calves. Had my typical glycogen loader from GAT uh, supplements. It's called Carbotene, it tastes great. Also had my protein shake from Dimatized Nutrition. Uh, cinnamon roll flavor, of course, I'm a cineholic. Um, best tasting protein on the market. And you'll never guess what else I had. I had a big fat cup of frozen yogurt. I know what you're thinking, Ryan, aren't you on a diet or something like that? And the answer is no, I'm not on a diet. I just count my calories using a flexible dieting method. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, if it fits your macros, um, something along those lines. And yeah, so I'm not on a diet. So I'm gonna kinda in this video talk about I will um, talk about your estimated calorie needs. Could be more, it could be less than what I say. Um, every individual is different, so, um, but they are gonna be around there um, for the values that I give you. So welcome to If It Fits Your Macros 101 or Flexible Dieting 101. Um, to start out with this, I wanna talk about um, estimated calorie needs for an individual. So for weight loss, a person will need 9.1 to 11.4 calories per one pound of their body weight. So if you tend to have a slower metabolism, then you'd wanna stick over here to the 9.1. And if your metabolism is a little bit faster, this is 11.4, um, is probably a better match for you. Um, maintaining weight is gonna be more, 11.5 to 13.6 calories per one pound of body weight. And gaining weight, 13.7 to 15.9 calories for every one pound of body weight. So for example, someone trying to lose weight at 150 pounds, that's how much the person weighs, they'd have to be eating between 13.65 and 17.10 calories um, based on these approximations over here. Multiply the body weight by 9.1 to get the lower, um, lower value and 11.4 multiplied by 150 the body weight to get 1710 calories. You'll do the same for maintaining weight over here. 150 pound individual will need to eat between 17 point, or 1725 calories and 2040 calories. Person trying to gain weight, 150 pounds, 2055 calories to 2385 calories. And again, we just multiply these values by the person's body weight to get these values. It's pretty the easy. values I just gave, they tend to be for um, sedentary people, people who aren't really um, working out. So if I were to use these values for me, I'm 175 pounds currently. So if I'm trying to gain weight right now, that means um, if I use the higher number, 15.9 times my body weight, um, 175, comes out to 2782 calories uh, to gain weight. I'm eating 4,000 right now and I'm having trouble gaining weight. So if I were to eat 27.82, I'd obviously lose weight. So yeah, this is for people who aren't really into working out, who just want to um, get to their fitness goals without um, exercise. So these were the initial values right here for the um, average person uh, calorie needs. And so those are for people who are sedentary and don't exercise or anything like that. So. For the people who do exercise and are watching this video, I've broken it down a little bit into three different categories that someone can fall into. Uh, foundation is a little bit newer, fit, um, next uh, progression of experience, and then lifestyle. These are the most progressed um, individuals. So for the foundation stage, these are people just starting out, getting in the gym, exercising, burning calories. Um, they haven't really seen results yet, but they're on the way. So since they are exercising, they are going to need more calories than the average person over here. Excuse me. And the fit person uh, has been doing this for a little bit. They're starting to get the hang of things. Um, they may have been doing this for a couple months to a year. And they're going to need more calories just because they put on more lean mass, uh, more healthy weight, um, just naturally. And so they're going to need more calories than uh, the foundation stage. And next and lastly is the lifestyle change the lifestyle stage, sorry. Uh, these people have been doing this for a while. They um, know what they're doing. Uh, they could be looking for help, 
but they have the swing of things and they've put on a lot more lean mass, which is why they need more calories than the fit stage and especially the foundation stage. So just to review all these numbers here, you're gonna multiply by your body weight, um, depending on your goal. If you think you're in the foundation stage, multiply your body weight by the values of your goal. So if you're trying to lose weight, 9.4 multiplied by your body weight and 11.8 multiplied by your body weight. And then you could kind of get a uh, minimum and maximum value that you can kind of play with um, to achieve your fitness goals. So I'm gonna start off with an example using Dienda. So if you haven't seen my last video where I talk about uh, protein, fat, and carbs, um, and a person's needs depending on their goal, uh, you should go check that out. It's called Nutrition 101, and then there's a long caption after that. But so Dienda is 130 pounds, and she wants to lose weight. So um, let's just say she falls into this fit category. Uh, she wants to lose weight, so, um, we're gonna use this right here. So multiply um, her body weight by 10 to get the minimum value. So she's gonna be at 1300 calories minimum. Multiply her body weight, 130, by 12.1. So the maximum value Dienda is gonna be eating is 1573 calories. And if you remember from my last video, someone who's uh, relatively fit is gonna need uh, 0.8 times their body weight um, to find the grams of protein that they need. So Dienda needs 104 grams of protein and to find her fat we are going to um, multiply each value by 0.2. In my last va uh, video I said that fat should constitute about 20% of an individual's calories. So if we take the calories that she should be eating between 1300 and 1573, the minimum and maximum values multiply each of those by 0.2. So after taking 20% of each value of calories, we come out to 260 calories for the minimum value and 315 calories for the maximum. So this is not the amount of grams that she's gonna be eating. Um, we have to actually, if we wanna find the grams, we have to divide by nine, because in my last video I said that every one gram of fat has nine calories in it. So to convert from calories to grams, divide by nine on each one. So after doing the math, if Dienda is going to stick with the minimum amount of calories for her weight loss goal, then she's gonna be needing 29 grams of fat. If she's gonna to stick to the maximum, she's gonna need 30, uh, 35 grams of fat. So she's at 104 grams of protein and between 29 and 35 grams of fat. So remember in my last video I said uh, whatever's left over um, from the calories the remaining calories is gonna be from carbs. So to find that, we have to find the number of calories that both the protein and the fat uh, contribute to the diet. And then whatever's left over is gonna be from carbs. So um, we said that Dienda is gonna be eating 104 grams of protein. Um, and if she wants to stick to the minimum value of 1300 calories, um, so let's say she has a slower metabolism. She's gonna stick to 1300 calories to lose weight and she should be eating about 29 grams of fat and uh, Multiply those by the values of the The macronutrients density in calories. So protein has four calories for every one gram fat has nine calories for every one gram multiply 104 grams of protein by four you get 416 calories of this diet that comes from protein. And same with fat, multiply nine by 29 grams, you get 261 calories from fat. And you add these values up and you get to 677 calories um, from protein and fat. Over here, let's say Dienda has a faster metabolism, she's gonna stick to the maximum value of calorie estimation that I gave. Um, so same thing over here, multiply the fats by nine so 35 grams of fat multiplied by nine, uh, 315 calories coming from fat in the diet, 104 grams of protein times four, and you get 416 calories from protein. Add these values up, you get 731 calories from both protein and fat. So we find that Dienda has eaten 677 gram, er, calories from both protein and fat, so we, uh, subtract that from the total amount of calories to find the remainder 
and it comes out to 623 calories that are left over, which are gonna contribute to carbs. And over here, for the maximum value, let's say she's sticking to the 1573 calories of the upper limit for her weight loss goals. Um, 731 coming from protein and fat. Subtract that from the total, and you will get 742 leftover calories that, again, are gonna be constituting carbs in her diet. So, once we have these two values, 623 over here, and 742 over here, those are, the calories are gonna be from, coming from carbs, so to, we divide those by four, since uh, carbs have four calories for every one so gram. Finally, we found out that Dienda is gonna be eating 156 grams of carbs as she's sticking to the lower um, end of her mac uh, calorie needs and if she's on the higher one 1573 total calories she's going to be eating 185 grams of carbs so let's go back over here this is for Dienda Dienda is going to be eating 104 grams of protein regardless and if she's sticking to the 1300 calories she's going to be eating 29 grams of fat and 156 grams of carbs and if she's sticking to the higher end, uh, 1573 total calories, she's still gonna have 104 grams of protein. She's gonna be sticking to 35 grams of fat and 185 grams of carbs. Now I know this is a lot of math in this process, but this is um, the basic foundation of what flexible dieting is. It's about calculating your calorie needs, your, also your protein, fat, and carb needs, and then um, Throughout the day, the foods that you eat are gonna be tracked um, probably using a um, iPhone or smartphone app. I use MyFitnessPal. And you track those foods and then you have to um, you know, plan out your day, uh, be smart about hitting your macronutrient needs and trying not to go over because too much protein is actually a bad thing. Um, it could be converted to fat if you eat too much. Uh, same with the other ones, carbs and fats. Uh, go over it's going to be converted to fat so um, I hope to do a video uh, later on in the week um, kind of explaining the MyFitnessPal app because that is how I track my macros a lot of the pros um, track their macros this way too a lot of my friends um, do and a lot of them should <laughs> so um, yeah that's pretty much it for flexible dieting I know it's a lot of math and the example of Dienda probably didn't uh, apply to you directly so um, if you have um, just watch the video again even take notes on your specific um, your specific goals your, your weight and uh, try it out for yourself um, if you think you're at the uh, foundation stage that I talked about the fit stage or even the lifestyle change then you can do the calculations on your own, um, given that you watched my last video. And even if you take notes on that last one, that's going to help you out a lot. So thanks for watching, guys. And stay tuned for my next video um, about, about dieting. And tomorrow I'm going to be doing back and arms workout with Katie. And I'll be doing a little bit of commentary just to kind of explain why we're doing the exercises that we're doing and how, why we're doing them the way that we're doing them. So look out for that, and I'll see you guys next time.